Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIYs. In today's video, we're going to be making this beautiful, beachy, boho-inspired candlescape. It's a high-end, home decor look, using items from the Dollar Tree. So let's jump right into this. The supplies we're using for today's project are a bamboo cutting board from the Dollar Tree, I always pick up a couple of these whenever they're in stock because they could be hard to find and they do sell out quickly. Next, we'll be using these large wooden beads. You can get wooden beads at Dollar Tree, but I like to buy the unfinished ones in bulk in multiple sizes from Amazon. The size I'm using today are the largest ones that I was able to find. Next, we'll be using a couple of the wooden puzzle pieces from the Dollar Tree. Then we'll be using these little tree stems from the gardening section of Dollar Tree. I love the way these look, they are so adorable. We'll also be using a bag of the river rocks from Dollar Tree. I got the black ones because I like that look for this project, but you can also use the neutral colored river rocks that they have um, if you don't like an all black look. Lastly, we'll be using three of the white votive candles. They come in a four pack from the Dollar Tree, but we are only gonna be using three of them today. I decided I wanted to stain all the wood that I'm using for this project. I'm using the Mini Wax Wood Finish in Jacobean because I love that rich dark brown tone that I get with it. Seriously, I, I use this stain color on everything. It's perfect for making wood signs, or I've also used it to stain an entire table. It's just a gorgeous color. The staining part is up to you. If you want a more natural finish, you can leave them natural, or you can use a lighter color stain as well. We'll be staining the cutting board, the wood beads, and the wood puzzle pieces. You're going to want to make sure that you get the sides of the cutting board. Don't worry about the bottom because you're not going to see that, but the sides will help with a more put together look. I set aside the cutting board to dry and begin staining the wood puzzle pieces. I was pretty sure I would be using three of them, but I wasn't positive I'd only need the three, so I thought it'd be smart to stain a few extra, um, which is always a really good idea, just so you have them available to you and ready to go and you don't have to stop, stain more, and wait for them to dry again. At this point, I start staining the wood beads. And just like the puzzle pieces, even though I knew I needed four to use as feet for my cutting board, I did stain a couple extra because you never know.
After the initial coat of stain, I did go back and apply another coat of stain on my cutting board because I wanted a really rich, deep brown shade for this. And I'm really loading that on there. <laughs> Now I put all those aside to thoroughly dry for a couple of hours and I flipped the cutting board over to attach the beads. The beads are going to be feet because I think adding a little height to the entire project will give it a more finished look. Now notice I'm using E6000 for this entire project because I plan on using the candlescape outside this summer and I know from experience that Hot glue just does not have the staying power for use on items that are left outside for weeks at a time. So I'm going to use the E6000 for the entire project. If you plan on using this inside, then hot glue would definitely be the way for you to go. The issue for me in using the E6000 is the slow drying, so it didn't really set right away. It might have been in my best interest to use a little hot glue with the E6000 to help things set faster, especially with the feet since I was flipping this over to continue working on it. Before you start gluing everything in place, you want to get a feel for where you want everything to go. You also want to decide on the candle placement. In this case, I knew I wanted one of the candles to be resting on three of the wood puzzle pieces, so I laid that out first. And then I knew one of the candles would be surrounded by rocks, so you can see I laid that out too. I started gluing that first candle and glued the river rocks surrounding it. Next, I took my three puzzle pieces and I glued them down, followed by the candle sitting on top of them. Now, this gives it a little different height than the first candle, which is glued directly onto the cutting board. For the third candle, I decided it should be sitting up higher than the first two to give it some visual interest. And since you won't see this base, I used three of the Dollar Tree wood cubes um, just to serve as a pedestal for the last candle. After I placed my tree stems all around it just to figure out the placement before gluing them down. After all three candles are glued down, I begin gluing the rocks. Now this part is the most time consuming. I'd say this part alone took about 45 minutes to an hour to finish, which thankfully I am speeding up to just a few minutes for you. Now you can do this according to your personal style. You can use less rocks to show more of the wood base or more rocks and really pile them onto one another. It's really whatever looks best to you. And also keep in mind that you're not limited to just rocks. You could really incorporate any kind of natural element to work with this. I can see maybe using some moss on the cutting board under or in between the rocks for a more river or lake type of look, or even some seashells or sea glass if you really wanted to give it like that beachy ocean kind of feel. I'm sure you could also use greenery or maybe a faux succulent or even a cactus. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. I'm actually thinking about doing another one after this with some moss because as those words came out of my mouth, I'm thinking I might love the look of that. I find that by spinning the board around to see how each angle looks while gluing, it makes it easier to figure out where each individual rock looks best. By using the E6000 glue in this case, because it dries so slow, it makes it easy to move rocks around into other spots if you're feeling like it doesn't look right where it is.
One of the things I really like about this project is that there are no rules about what goes where. It's all up to you. So really, there are no mistakes. Everything you do is just right. And this is how this piece turned out. I love this candlescape so much. It's beachy, a little rustic, with some boho vibes. I think it'll look great as a table centerpiece for dining outside. It will also work on a side table or a mantle inside. It's functional as well as beautiful to look at. This is a really easy DIY that can be customized in so many ways. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY. And if you'd like to see more DIYs, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.